Yo, what's up? This is DJ Burn One. Daniel Payne, and we just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastards. All right, so we got Daniel Payne and DJ Burn One off the porch with us today. What up, what up? What's good, family? Chilling, man, working at the same time. Okay. Blessed yeah. to be dropping another project. How yeah. many years later, guys? Man, it's like 14, 15 years later, you know what Absolutely, I'm saying? Absolutely, man. Yeah, you guys have been going at it for a long time and right back at it with another one, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's take it back, man. How did you guys meet up at the first time and how far, like you said, 14 years? Yeah. Um, we. Yeah, I think it was on MySpace. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I mean, I had gone. <laughs> yeah. I had just... MySpace. Um, I had heard about Burn one because he did Chicken Talk and in Birmingham, Chicken Talk was huge. So I went, I saw, I saw he had the email on the CD or whatever. I sent something there, and then I went on MySpace and found him. And, and hey, hey, I sent you this song called Polo and Nikes. Okay, Go check I it out. That you know song. what I'm saying? And then he hit me back. He came to Alabama, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? With G Man, shout out to G Man, I remember that. And then I came over to Atlanta and met with him, and we've been, you know, rocking since. You know what I mean? Okay. So, Burn, what did you see in, uh, he was going by KD at the yeah, time, and what did you see KD. in KD back yeah. then that made you want to go all the way to Alabama to work with this guy? Man, I had uh, my email up there for people to send me music, and I was getting some terrible stuff for a while, you know, and I listened to every song. I'm like, I'm listening to every song, I don't care what it is, you know, send me whatever. And I heard uh, Polos and Nikes, that was a record. I was like, man, that shit sounds different. This shit yeah. sounds like some country rap tunes. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit I grew up on, Pimp C, Organized Noise, you know? Mm -hmm. Richie's Mafia, just soulful. Um, and so I reached out to him and I just pulled up on him in Birmingham, just in some parking lot. I don't know where really? we met, you know? <laughs> I just remember being like, I remember hearing the song and being like, I just want to make some music with you. And I wasn't producing back then. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Mm -mm. So was it like instant chemistry when you guys met? Did you guys click right away or? It seemed like we got right along and then we knocked out uh, The Last Man Standing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we knocked out Last Man Standing. Um, I had had a few already, already recorded because Paul on Nikes was like the first song I recorded with B-flat. So I had recorded like in the studio. I mean, I'm still a teenager at the time. So recording in the studio. So. But that was the first th thing I recorded with B flat, and I sent it to him. I was proud of how it sounded and everything. So that was like the first song. And then I, I had some more in the stash, and I kept recording. We did Last Man Standing, Pass It Out Hand to Hand, and we did Player President, Untouchable. And then the first, see, a lot of people don't know this, I'm the first person to drop on Burn One Beats when he went by Mick Vegas oh, yeah. on Soul In. And then um, uh, Lito, me and Lito was about the same time. So, and G-Man, it was like y'all three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Down the porch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we, we dropped that. So, and we, you know, G flew it, all that shit. We've just been going since then, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I took like a year off of doing uh, mixtapes and stuff to just focus on doing beats. And he would just come out. They would just come out and just sleep on my floor. I had like, nothing. He would just, they would just sleep on the floor. It'd be like five, you know, five people in there just sleeping. But that's how we came up with, yeah, Soul In. So, yeah. Um, during that time, like Renaissance Gangster. You okay. know? Yeah. 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 B flat and B Kirk uh, co produced that with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially that song, All Right. Like, I remember oh, yeah. I had picked out that's the a classic sample. right there, man. They chopped it up. Uh, B Kirk did like the hi hats or something. Um, B flat, I think he played guitar or something on that. And then Burn went, uh, put the drums in there, chopped up the, uh, chopped up the sample, you know, all that shit. And, and we did all that shit. We, we used to do that, come in there and just everybody, like you said, sleep on the floor. Me, B Flat, B Kirk, um, Hollow. Hollow, Hollow Ben used to come through there. Um, and we would just sleep sleep on it, on his apartment floor and just make music all day, get high and make music. You know what I'm saying? All day, all night. You know, you know a real full, full circle moment was years later, uh, a guy found Lou Bond. Who actually was who we sampled for <laughs> yeah. that record. Oh, really? He just, Lou Bond just drives his bike, like rides a bike around this neighborhood in Memphis, you know? <laughs> he was like, yo, the guy you sampled actually like rides a bike around. So he played him the record. 
He and fucked I, with it? He was like, what's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was in Memphis. Mm -hmm. We was on tour with Yellow Wolf mm -hmm. okay. in Memphis, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I forget what he said he was talking about, and yeah, I was like, all right. <laughs> you know, Lil Bon was like fucking with the record, you know? Yeah. So it was like to go from picking the sample and us just making it just like loving the shit, and then Lito rapping on it, making like such a classic record with what oh, he did yeah. to it. And then Lil Bon actually hearing it, you know? I was like, damn, that's just dope. That's wild right there. Yeah, very dope. So, Burn, what made you want to make that transition, uh, you know, from mixtape host to, man, I want to make some beats myself, man. Man, I was so inspired with the music I was getting. The rappers <laughs> really? were so dope. Hill and Freddie Gibbs and all these people were killing it. And I was just like, the beats weren't where they were at. I feel like it was a time where people stopped sampling because they didn't want to pay for the clearances, mm -hmm. you know? They didn't want to pay for all that. So they were trying to do original music, but it wasn't that dope. Like, now you got, like, loop makers and stuff like that. So it was, like, real basic music. I want to hear some soulful, soulful music, like the polos and Nikes and, you know, country yeah. rap tunes that I grew up on. And so I just took a whole year and I was like, I'm going to make five beats a day. And I made five beats a day for a year. Um, and what's funny is a lot of those practice beats ended up being Soul In and Renaissance okay. Cancer and Sunday on the Porch. And then uh, two of them ended up going to ASAP Rocky. Yep. Yams found them on SoundClick and I ended up being Houston Old Head oh, and shit. rolling up. Yeah. Just from practice, though, you know, it's like, it's pretty funny. What made you go with the name Mick Vegas and not just come out the gate, man? Because DJ Berwin already had a name, man. <laughs> yeah, because I, I didn't want to like use my name for people to fuck with. It. I wanted people to just fuck with the music on, on that. And also, I wanted to create like a production crew, okay. you know, with a bunch of different live musicians and stuff like that, which is what we have now with the Five Points Bakery. You yeah. Know? That's actually now, but that's why Starlito said, R.P. McVegas, yeah. welcome back, burn one, you know? I tried to do it, and I did like three projects and a bunch of beats under the name McVegas. I was like, kind of felt like it was a pseudonym. I was like, I'm just trying to get more people in on this with me, you know? Yeah. Trying to speak it into existence, you know? So what was the chemistry like recording Soul In, and when can we get this on streaming platforms? This is like the only one that's really missing, right? Yeah, it's, I, it's on there now. Yeah, oh, it's it? on there now. Yeah, okay. yeah, so. I mean, that was just young and hungry, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just wanted to do something different. Like, cause when I'm from in Birmingham, like everything is is uh, is is trap, is hard, is is gutter. You know what I'm saying? That that's just the environment, duh. You know what I'm saying? So I always wanted to be different. So I wanted to show another side of Birmingham. Like, you know, we it's a soul for city too. So that that's kind of the approach I took. And them samples, you know what I'm saying? Giving it that type of feel, but talking about the other side of the street, talking about the other side and putting soul to it is like kind of like what I want to do and kind of like the more in introspective um, side of street music. So that, that's kind of like what I what I what I came up with and what I wanted to do with soul in. So that's and, and, and we worked on it. It didn't even take that long to do because matter. I can tell you a story we had. It was a I had just dropped Untouchable and I I had a um, so it was somebody wanted me to do a project where it was just straight trap shit, straight trap shit. That's what Untouchable was, and then we were gonna shop it to some labels, whatever, whatever. But it didn't turn out like how I wanted it to turn out. You know what I'm saying? So I started. We started working on Soul In. We was like, we're gonna stick to this and do it like that. So. That's how Soul In ended up. But it's one of my favorite projects that I done did. And it, you know, it mean a lot to me too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love it because we were just digging through so many different samples. Yeah. yeah. So many different artists. I'm uh, sure that probably took more time than actually recording the songs, right? Yeah. Was just finding the right samples for these songs? Or? No, we found them so quick. Oh, really? And then there were so many records, like, we just love music. So it was like so many songs, like, let's use this one, let's use this one. Like, that, that was the quickest time finding the samples, you know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of my part in production, is that I I, I try to find samples and I, I send it to Burns, send it to B Flat, send it to whoever, and be like, hey, what can y'all do with this? You know what I'm saying? So that that's that's how I contribute. I don't play nothing, but I contribute with the ear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And going from that, that's the same thing with the new project. So yeah. Sent me, you know, pretty much all the samples, and I was like, you know, picked out which ones I was vibing with. Yeah. Yeah. So what's been some of the keys to maintaining this long friendship, relationship that you two have? Especially in music, you know, everyone falls out at some point, but I get the feeling you guys never really did. You guys have always been creating together. So what's yeah. been some of the keys to maintaining that relationship? Um, I say grow, you know what I'm saying? You growing together. I mean, people, um, you know, it's hard to do that because 
every, everybody, I think in the, in the game, like everybody's seeing what they can get out of the person. What can I, how can you help my career go to the next level? It's not about the genuine like love for music. So, and that, that's what it is. Like every relationship I done had in music is, is just genuine. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like, what can I get from you? What can you do for me? What, what, I'm, I'm not gonna work with you unless you can do this for me and this, this and that. So that's, that's what it is. It's just a love for music and the, and the, and the, um, the growth in the music continue um, with the personal growth. Like everybody have, you know what I'm saying, a personal thing going on, but at the end of the day, what brings everything together, the love for the music. So I think that's number one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like that understanding, you know? It's like sometimes we'll have shit going on or I have shit going on, you know what I'm saying? And it can't be like, oh, it's supposed up for five days, but we're still getting it in. You know yeah. What I'm saying? yeah. And just having that, that flexibility, you know? Yeah. And like you said, like we both have that similar thing of we never come to a situation like, what can we get out of it? It's mm -hmm. like, what can we bring to the situation all the time, you know? So I feel like we're similar in that regard. Absolutely. Yeah, and the music's dope and people fuck with it from the jump and it was just fun to make and it was just fun to hang out and just create and go through samples and be like, man, this is what 3-6 Mafia used to yep. sample it. This is what, you know, yeah, like yeah, I'm flipping yeah. a sample in a different way because the Lil Bond sample, Outkast is sampled on Waylon. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. That's right. So it's like, that was just us, you know, being like, how can we flip that sample different, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Burn, what do you think about Daniel Payne's growth as an artist <laughs> from when you first started working up with him up until today, this new project? It's dope, man. It's dope. Uh, just seeing his consistency and uh, just how he's just evolved over time. I always liked him because he just put his feelings in the music and I always was talking about how he felt in the moment, you know? Yeah. So I feel like that's always going to be a timeless thing. So yeah. I was never worried about when we did a beat if he was going to come with a whack verse or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm every, I feel like I've never told him, like, oh. Maybe once, maybe once yeah, on the yeah, new yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was it. That was the first time, <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, Literally yeah, never, really. you know. But yeah. you know, it's like whatever is best for the music, you know. And that's another thing too. Like, we've never really clashed on the music because it's like we know, you know, like we both love what we love. So it's like, oh, we have this frame of reference, you know. It's like UGK Records, or mm -hmm. you know, it's like we know what it needs to sound like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so. Five points. That's the name of the new project, right? So, how long did you guys uh, work on this project? Where did this idea come from? Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been in the works for I say a year or so. You know what I'm saying? It really start we really started getting the ball rolling. I would say during the pandemic or whatever last year when we just said out. Like I said, I was sending him samples. Like I had this idea. What what you think about this? What you think about that? So and we we kind of cranked it out and, and finished it then. Um, but what I say is like the idea of it, like five points come from two places, right? So the studio, um, where the five, whole five points movement started was in little five points in Atlanta. So we would go over there, just sleep on the couch at, at professor house, just sleep on the couch. We would come from Birmingham, you know what I'm saying? And just make music all the time. You know what I'm saying? Walt, Ricky, pro. You know what I'm saying? Everybody used to be just in there making music. So, uh, 15 but, hours a day. 15 hours a day. 15 hours a day when we linked up, when I finally got with them, I was like, yo. This is what I've been looking for. Fucking right. This yeah. is what I had in mind from Vegas. You know what I'm saying? I was like, we're not leaving the studio. It's 15 hour days, like four or five days a week. Yeah. I was driving like an hour to get there, you know? <laughs> like, it's it didn't matter. It. I'm like, this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah. And so. Then, Five points also, I, I represent because we were five points west being in Birmingham. So, and also in Birmingham, it's five points west. I'm from the west side of Birmingham. So, if you go to five points west, you can go to every neighbor right there. It's, it's looking at every neighborhood in Birmingham that on the west side, and, and, and that's where I'm from. So, that's, that's kind of part of it too, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And then five points south in Birmingham where the nightlife was when we, you know, was coming up. So all that is tied in. That's, that's the, that's the, the uh, idea behind it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So were you guys able to create this project together or was this through email and calls? And yeah, yeah, all through email. Like I play some over the phone, like what you think about, like I, I don't want to give away the samples that's on the project, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we'll play some over the phone, like what you think about this? What you think about that? And I record it. Cause I was recording at the house, you know what I'm saying? And I sent it back to him like right then, 
Like, what you think about this? You know what I mean? And that's, that's how it came about. You feel me? Yeah. All right, so let's break down these songs, man. Number one, Royalty with Big Crit. So how did this come together? <laughs> yeah, um, well, my homie um, Ralph, uh, Audio Anthem, he just won the Grammy for producing on Nas album. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So he, he do samples. So he had a sample. He, he was sending me stuff. So I sent it to Byrne, like, what do you think about this? And um, Byrne, he flipped it, you know what I'm saying, did his thing to it. And, um, and it came about. So, of course, B, I heard that the song Royalty. I was like, okay, big crit. So I, I went and I pulled, I, uh, I hit, hit big crit and everybody up. And I said, hey, he said he was in the studio in Atlanta, man. I, I literally, he was like, I'm in the studio. Can you come down here? So I was like, I was like, no, nah, I ain't in Birmingham. I'm in Houston. So I said, you know what, you're going to be, it was a Friday. He, I said, you're going to be in there Monday? Yeah. So I, I booked the flight. These are the pandemic, low pandemic prices. <laughs> and, I, and I went straight, I came straight to Atlanta, came to the studio, knocked it out, went back to Houston. You know what I mean? And, and the rest is history, you know. So what was that experience like getting in the studio with Crit? Oh, yeah, yeah. So me and Crit actually go way back. I mean, Burn went, Burn went with Crit, me and Crit go, we've been knowing about each other and talking about doing music for damn near 15 years too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like. Yeah, I was in there for David Banner too. And I was in there with Banner and um, Crit the other day. And Chris was like, man, I just remember the other day talking to you on the phone when I was in high school on the bus. Oh, shit. I was like, damn, yeah. I didn't even remember that. So it's been that, you know, so for sure, at least 15 years for sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because matter of fact, um, my homie Ben, his first cousin, Janky John, was trying to get me and Crit in a group like 2007. Like, y'all y'all the new UGK. But you oh, know wow. what I'm saying? Of course, it never, it never, it never happened. You know, by that time, by the time we were ready, you know, Crit had took off, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's that's what that is. So it's a long time coming, you know what I'm saying? I didn't so, know yeah. it went far that far back. That's yeah, yeah, right yeah, there. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Damn, All right. I love making that beat. Yeah. I'd actually, we've actually been working on this for about two and a half years. Yeah, yeah, Because I was yeah. in North Carolina, I kind of went on a quarantine before quarantine. <laughs> just you know, get my mind right. Sometimes you got to get away to, you know. Absolutely. Take care of mental health, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, and I remember he sent me that and a couple other ones, and that yeah. was when we got started. I remember hearing that sample. Okay. And I was like, man, that shit's super hard. So what about number two, Benz? Oh, yeah, that, that's the one that has the, 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 the legendary ATL song sample. I'll let y'all try to figure out what it is, but um, I sent that to Burn One. I, I came up with that, and I sent it to him, and we... Uh, and he sent it back. I was like, okay, this is fine. I think Walt Walt added some keys to it. Walt Live, he added some keys to it. And this is all over email talking, and he s sent it back, and we we updated it like that. And then... I sent him the raw beat at first. He was like, get Walt to play some keys. You know, yeah. so it was like we were still interactive working. Yeah. Just not sleeping on the couch. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not sleeping on the couch, you know, and in the flow, you know. So... But yeah, and, 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 and I thought it sound, it was ATL, but I thought it sounded West Coast, you know what I'm saying? So I hollered at G Perico, he came, he came through and hot on it, you know what I'm saying? We still got to make it out there, California all the way open now, so we got to go out there and shoot a video for it. But cool. yeah, yeah, I thought it was the perf it's perfect match to get G Perico on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd be made to go out there and shoot that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so number three, Bond. Got the Pimp C sample on this one, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's that's a beat, um, Burn made, and I heard it, and I, you know, what I'm saying, hot on. I mean, you can tell them about the about the track and everything. Um, that's the one with Anna Belena. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh yeah, Anna's on it too. Okay. Anna's yeah, yeah. on it too. Definitely, she's part of the production crew. Five Points Now is Go Rick, Go Walt Live and Anna Belena. So okay. we all produced and everything together. So she did the hook, laced it. Uh, I remember just coming up with the beat and that first little sound. Like, I love to scroll through presets. He finds something and it just goes crazy. You're like, oh, that's interesting. That sounds <laughs> weird. And then uh, KD got it and did his thing, you know? So it was very dope. Yeah. Yeah, and um, as far as, that's my personal favorite because, like I said, I like to be introspective, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and speak, speak, 
certain things from another perspective. So that's my fa that's my personal fave, and I think it represents, you know, if somebody wanted to know who I am, they you know listen to that one. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and talk to us about uh, Pimp C's influence on both of your music, man, because we know both of you guys are a huge fan of Pimp C. Man, it can't be under it can't be said enough. It really can't. Just how soulful how soulful his music was and he was such a student of the game to get like the guitar player from the meters on his record oh yeah that i found out later i was like damn he really went and found the people he was sampling he went and found the source you know it's like if i was able to get lou bond to play on something you know mm -hmm. makes me think of that maybe i need to go find him you know <laughs> yeah. but i'm like man that shit's so dope you know so a lot of that influenced me to really get closer to uh dungeon family here you know, so now I work with Preston Crump, who played bass on all the Outkast stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, all of the elevators to everything, you know, like, so now I work with him. I'm, I'm working on his album right now, producing that. Oh, um, We produced the first song on the recent Superfly soundtrack that they came out with. Yep. Uh, with the Sleepy Brown and Scar record, if you want it. Mm -hmm. And we had, like, almost a whole crew. <laughs> like, we had Chance, who played keys on uh, Sorry, Miss Jackson, and all, like, Liberation and all that. Um, you know, Sleepy, of course. And, man, it's just, it's dope, but, like, Pimp C... I feel like uh, seeing seeing his elevation and growth, and and just the samples and the, the beats and his attitude and the way he rapped, you know, his energy, you know, I felt like I didn't think KD sounded like Pimp C, but I felt like I was like I'm getting <laughs> some of that, like ah, you know, mm -hmm. um, with the soulful beats. So man, Pimp C, Bun B, all that. Like, yeah, for me, it's just the honesty, you know what I'm saying? Just the honesty throughout the music and also that it's real music and relatable, you know, because um, as far as, you know, being from the South or whatever, you know, uh, just just it, it represented the vibe of the South. And I feel like now, I, I think I mentioned this before, like everything is trapped now. Everything is just the same, like BPMs, the same uh, sounds in every in every song. So... I, I like to bring that side of the South back out, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like that's a part of the South that doesn't get the, d just that sound, that that old school, like, church sound, or that, um, just those that live instrumentation, you know what I'm saying? The laid back, you know, that part, the player shit, you know what I'm saying? That That's the shit I enjoy, you know what I'm saying? So that that's another side of the South that this, I feel like kind of left behind now, but it's still here, you know, that's what I want to bring bring to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, another comparable between Pimp C and UKD is you guys are both very vocal about what you believe in. Oh, yeah, yeah. You we knew saying? where Pimp C stood on, yeah, on yeah, some issues. Yeah, yeah. And same thing, anyone that follows you on social media, <laughs> they gonna know how you feel about everything. You ain't hold, you ain't trying to be politically correct. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not a politically correct person. You know, I think Twitter kind of shadow banned me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> over the past, you know, few years, but it's all good. I don't get no type of, I look at my tweets now, no impressions. I'm like, it used to be jumping, but I think they fucked me up. I don't know what I said, but I said something over time that made them, you know what I'm saying, do me like that. TikTok too, they took me off too. Really? And I wasn't doing nothing but making smoothies and cooking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I don't know what's up with that, you know what I'm saying, but it's all good. Fan from TikTok, the mixtape coming. <laughs> uh, could you imagine Pimp C with social media? Yeah, yeah, he probably would have banned him too. You know, when the last as long? No, when the last as long at all? It'd have been great for a moment though. Oh yeah. All right, so number four, Purple Diamonds. Oh yeah, that's that's one that I can say. I sent back to Burn. He was like, "Nah, you need to sing on this one." You know what I'm saying? Like, cause he he had me go back and re-sing the the backgrounds on the hook. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's another introspective song too. I, I wanted to just it's like put put somebody in in the mindset of oh, like somebody trip tripping out. You know what I'm saying? Whether you on shrooms, whether you just smoking, like seeing things that you'd have never seen. You know, cause that's the culture now. You know what I'm saying? Like. Um, purple diamonds, pink cocaine, trying to just, just imagine the shit you ain't never seen, take, taking your consciousness higher, you know what I'm saying? So, and, 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 and the feelings that you get and the things you think about when you're doing that, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's kind of what, well, I took it lyrically on that one, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. All right, number five, Hawaii, man. Oh, that's, a, that's another one. Um, 
Burn Maid, and it, it, I actually was in Hawaii just visiting, and I said, man, I got to make a song about this, so I made the song about it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was laid back and cool, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, then you guys threw the Let Me Ride, the classic Let Me Ride with Freddie Gibbs, man. One of my favorites. Still one of my favorites, man. This song has stood the test of time, too, man. So uh, why did you decide to give this one to the people once again? Well, you know, um, I can tell the story about how this came, this song came about. Like, I'm going to try to be, you know, not too long-winded, but uh, we, this was one of the ones we were literally in. I think Byrne had a spot in Alpharetta. We was, we were sleeping there. I had the sample. I brought the sample. You know what I'm saying? And it's an old school Midwest group, I think from Chicago, that made the song. So when he chopped it up, I was like, you know what? Some told me to say that. I'm going to ride on a bit smoke through the hood going holly at my kinfolk. Because it, it felt like the Midwest. You know what I'm saying? And so if you from, if you from Alabama, or you from Mississippi. Matter of fact, if you from Chicago, you from Milwaukee, you from Ohio, you from Gary, Indiana, where Fred is from, your family, you got an auntie, a grandma, a cousin in Mississippi, Alabama, Memphis, you know, just that specific area. Same way them Texas and Louisiana niggas is Cali and Atlanta is like New York. That's the Midwest and like Alabama, Mississippi is the same. You know what I'm saying? It's the same bloodline of people. So Dirty got a song, if you listen to the song, The Pip and the Gangster. If you listen to the second verse and you listen to uh, the gangster verse, he, he say, uh, uh, I, but it's a similar line. So I was like, it just came to me. And so I just wanted to bridge the cultures, you know what I'm saying? Because the same way culture we have up there with Fred, Freddie from and Gary, matter of fact, Michael Jackson from his his mama, he from Gary, but his mama from Alabama. So all that shit is the same. And I love how the Midwest niggas had the laid back beats, but this drill now, but they, it, the, the essence of the Midwest sound to me was them laid back beats, but they was rapping fast. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just wanted to tie that both of them cultures in because these are the same people. And then Freddie got on there, he did his thing. And I feel like that was just a classic down south Midwest song. And I wanted to sh let people hear that again, you know what I'm saying? And let people, you know, show, because Freddie is huge. Now, he's one of the biggest rappers in the game right now. So I wanted to show people like, hey, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's up there, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the longer, the short, or the, or the essence of that song. It's just tying them bloodlines and them, you know, the culture. It's about family. And a matter of fact, my family had, it got canceled through the pandemic, but we had a family reunion in Chicago. I was supposed to go. So they just show you how, how tied that, you know what I'm saying, the two Midwest and the South is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's your favorite song on the project, Byrne? Let me ride, but I mean, you know. <laughs> it's, it's so hard, you know what I'm saying? It's like such a perfect, you know, such a perfect song. Um, on the new ones, Royalty So Hard. Okay. Royalty So Hard. Um, it's a good way to start it off. Yeah. Yeah. And then Big Crit Snap So Hard on there, too. Yep. You know, it was nice to hear him on something fresh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what videos do you guys plan to, to, to drop off of this? Have you guys shot any yet? Um, I got one for Bun. I, I put a little clip out of it. Um, if we can get, you know what I'm saying, get Big Crit. I, We'll, we'll try to do one for that, for sure. We, I got a, a layout for it, you know what I'm saying? And then Ben's, I actually got a, um, we're going to go out there and shoot one to Cali, but I got a, um, an animated video right now, you know what I'm saying, that a, 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 a very dope animator made for me, you know what I'm saying? So we're going we gonna to drop all of them, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, what's next for you guys? We know the project just dropped, so. What else are you guys working on individually? Um, I have five points. I have a project called For Players Only that I'm going to drop um, after this sometime. And then I, I'm, I'm work, I got an R&B project. So I've been working with all, 
all you know all the producers that I started in the game with. So me and B Flat did the Purple Onion. He did most of the stuff on there. Him and B Kirk, but mostly it was B Flat. And then Ralph Audio Anthem, the one I was just talking about. He did the four EP. He did most of them. Burn one and Five Points. They did this one. Then I'm I'm gonna try to reach out to Presley P. And we 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 gonna cook up some. We got one or two already ready right now. And then um, John Quest, um, me and him got an R&B type album. And then uh, DJ Con D, we be been working too. We got we got some you know up the sleeve too. So and then I'm gonna try to do an album. And I'm gonna try to get everybody in there. Uh, Burn, B Flat, Walt, Ricky, Anna. And we're going to try everybody in one room, and we're going to try to do a whole album. That's going to be fire. That'd be dope right there. Yeah. 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 Super hard. Yeah. What are you working on, Burn? You know, you uh, got yeah. your hands on a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of producing, a lot of mixing and mastering. Uh, I've I mixed and mastered at Tree Sound, the head of mixing and mastering there at yep. Tree Sound Studios here in Atlanta. Um, reach out if you need your shit, mix and master. You know, <laughs> yeah. shit sound right. Um, man, I've been doing a lot of that. Got a record, uh, a video that just got added on Yo MTV. Raps, I think is the name, not MTV Jams, now Young TV Raps, and uh, BT Jams uh, with this flops, his name John William. Okay. Uh, so I've been producing for him. We just dropped his second album uh, that's out right now, but Big Yip got on the record. Nice. Found your family, yeah. you know? So I was like, uh, in December, I was like, what do I want to do for my birthday? I'm like, shoot a video for this song. So we <laughs> shot the video and everything, and it just got added this past week. So that's super dope, you know? Just like, you know, like we're talking about just doing stuff you love, and then, you know having it resonate with people. That's always dope, you know? Yeah. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming out. We do samples. We started doing original samples like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's crazy now. So we've been doing uh, a lot of samples and a lot of different projects and different things. Um, we've got a lot of music coming out. Ricky's got projects coming out and a Valina. While live, we got so much stuff coming out. Uh, we've been doing a lot of sync work. So like okay. we did a uh, sound design on the 1917 and Justice League movie trailers. Oh, sweet. So if you watch those trailers, some of those like gun sounds and different things, we're like breaking Hennessy bottles and different things to like come <laughs> up with that shit, you know? Um, it's, it's super dope, you know, stretching out and doing different things. And then the, the latest thing is these NFTs. Oh yeah. So we've been- yeah, we uh, see you've been going hard for those, man. Going crazy, man. We've, we've uh, been, you know, pretty successful with it. It's been, it's been really dope. It's, it's like a whole new world to be able to own things digitally mm -hmm. um, and then put that together with the cryptocurrency angle and the blockchain. Um, it's really dope. It's really exciting to like be in early on that. Yeah. Uh, so we've been finding like visual creators on Twitter um, from around the world, like um, England, New Zealand. We just sold a piece with a guy from South Korea. It was like a time lapse. Oh, wow. Uh, South Korea, yeah. And um, it's, it's just dope. So we'll just come up with these pieces. They'll have a visual and we'll come up with the music and then sell it for Ethereum, you know, you like put it up for auction and, <laughs> yeah. you know, folks buy it, you know, it's like, um, it's, it's really dope. It's a whole new world. And, and the way NFTs, um, the way you can use them, it's, it's incredible the way people are adding new things like unlockables and different, uh, like personal experiences, like Gary Vee's adding like access to it. Like you can come see him in person if you buy oh, this really? NFT. Yeah. yeah, I've seen people sell like a tattoo with it. Like you buy this picture and then somebody will come give you the tattoo. Oh shit. You know, it's a little different than just a pure um, digital angle, which is like what mainly it is. Like it's ba mainly like a visual, um, a visual based uh, mm -hmm. medium. But music's coming into it and a lot of new artists are getting into it. So I'd say if you're uh, yeah. interested, look it up, you know. Yeah, what'd you think of Currency? He dropped, uh, I think like an EP. Oh, that's through right. his NFT, and he's like, "I'll never release it any other way." And that's I think he sold it for like two hundred bucks, and yeah, people are eating it up, man. Yeah, we dropped a drum uh, drum kit called Genesis. Check that out. You okay. know, we put it up, and um, like, yeah, it did good. Yeah. It's it's dope, man. It's a whole new world, and um, it's dope to be in like. Because we've been doing stages. it for like 10 months now. Yeah. And people are just now finding out Yeah, you out were one of the it. first ones on Twitter I saw. I was like, what the fuck is an NFT? <laughs> and you're seeing it. <laughs> I had it's to like, do my it's, research, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a whole new world, man. Yeah. So oh, That's what's up, man. You guys got any last words? Any shout outs before we wrap it up? Check out my website, thefivepointsbakery.com, uh, at DJ Burn one DJ B-U-R-N-O-N-E. You can find me anywhere. Uh, all social media. All social media, at I am Daniel Payne. You know what I'm saying? That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube is just Daniel Payne, TikTok, when they let me back on the, um, you know, all that. So, 
yeah, last word. Y'all keep jamming to the to the real music, man. It, you know what I'm saying? Keep supporting. Keep you know what I'm saying? Spreading it to everybody you can, man. So you can so you can get something out the music. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, and we gonna keep providing it for y'all. You know what I'm saying? We got new merch on the way for the project as well. So be on the lookout for that. You know what I mean? Through the crimson tide, how we ride in the Bama Smoking lemon Chris Cow, that yellow hammer Big in my state like Julio Jones Sitting on leather seats in the car